Hi everyone, in this video we're going to introduce the notions of velocity and acceleration. So the setup is as follows. We will start by letting, so let s of t, so s here is a function of time, and this will be the position function of an object at time t. So this is the position function, so position this in quotes, position function of an object, so of an object at time t, so at time t. t can be in seconds or in minutes, uh, depends on the question. So the average velocity is going to be defined just like the average rate of change. So the average velocity over AB, so over AB, well, if you recall, the average rate of change was F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So here it's S, not F. So it's S of B minus S of A over B minus A. Or, or uh, over a different interval, let's say over, um, say instead we take it over the interval T, T plus delta T, we would get S of t plus delta t minus s of t. And then on the bottom, you subtract uh, this minus this. So the t's cancel, and you just get delta t. So remember, we did this before when we were constructing uh, instantaneous rate of change. So what you do is you take the limit. So take the limit. Take the limit. And you get the derivative, right? So the limit is the derivative. So s prime of t is equal to the limit as delta t approaches 0 of s of t plus delta t. Looks really scary. All the deltas make it look really frightening. <laughs> uh, over or beautiful, right? So it's a matter of perspective. So the derivative of uh, position is the limit of the average velocity. And so this is just called the velocity. So this is the instantaneous rate of change of the position at time t, or the derivative of the position, or just even better, the velocity. So this is the velocity at time t. So when we say velocity, we mean instantaneous velocity. Unless we say average velocity, it's assumed to be velocity. So we can give it a new name. We can call it v, v for velocity, v for velocity. So we can say that s prime of t is equal to v, and that will be our velocity at time t, at time t. Likewise, the acceleration is defined as the rate of change of the velocity, right? You're either speeding up or slowing down, so that's going to be the second derivative. So the second derivative of position uh, will be the acceleration, so a of t. Note that this is the derivative of velocity. Right, the derivative of velocity. Let's recap everything so you have it all in one place. So a recap of everything we've just done quickly. So we have s of t. We know that this is the position function. So this is the position function. And we know that v of t is the velocity function. And that's equal to s prime of t. So this is the velocity at time t. So this is the velocity. Velocity. And we know that a of t is the acceleration, right? That's the acceleration. This is s double prime of t. So this is the acceleration, acc acceleration. OK. Extra life knowledge, if you take the absolute value of the velocity, that's called speed. Okay, because velocity has a direction, right? Speed is the magnitude or absolute value of that. Also, if you take the third derivative of position, 
right? The third derivative of position, you get something kind of funny. It's called the jerk. So it's the rate of change of acceleration. So that's the important stuff, right? So you have a position function. How fast your position is changing with respect to time, that's your velocity. How fast your velocity is changing with respect to time, that's your acceleration. And then you have the magnitude or absolute value of velocity, that's speed. And the third derivative of position or the derivative of acceleration, same thing, is the jerk, is the jerk. There's a formula that we'll use in, that you'll see in, in some of the problems, uh, perhaps. And it's the formula for uh, the position of a free-falling object uh, neglecting air resistance. So the position of a free-falling object, so free-falling free falling object uh, neglecting neglecting uh, air resistance air resistance you spell resistance tons, is and it's typically given in the problems you just have to know what everything means so I'll write it down and then in the next video we'll, we'll do an example where we use it um, it's it's one half G t squared plus v sub 0 times t plus s sub 0. So it's also read v naught or s naught. Naught is spelled n-a-u-g-h-t. So uh, physicists often say s naught uh, or, or s sub 0 works as well. Uh, and so what is everything here? Well, g is the acceleration due to gravity. So this is the ACC okay, due to gravity. Usually, it's going to be uh, plugged in for us in the problems we do, so like you won't actually see it. Okay, uh, it'll be it'll be taken care of. Um, if you know some physics, I'll, I'll just tell you anyways. So this will be negative thirty-two uh, feet per second squared, or or you can write it as negative nine point eight uh, meters uh, per second uh, squared. That's another way to write it. S naught or S sub zero. This is your initial position. So this is your initial position. So if you're throwing something up from the ground, it's going to be zero. If you're dropping something from a building, it will be the height of the building. And then um, V naught, this is your initial velocity. So initial velocity. So if you're um, dropping something at zero, if you're throwing something, it's going to have... Um, a, a non-zero uh, value. So that's it for now. In the video uh, that follows, videos that follow, you'll see an example or two of uh, how to use this formula and uh, use all of this math. That's it.